All right, welcome back to Bayou Time. Joining me, the Sheriff of Terrebonne Parish, Sheriff Tim Saunier. Sheriff, good to see you. How are you doing? Good morning, Martin. How are you? Mardi Gras over, and I know in the sheriff's world that's different than <laughs> revelers who say, Mardi Gras over, I can't wait till next year, but so much planning. How was Mardi Gras? Just a general overview. Well, if you overall, um, we, had, we had a lot less fights. Mm -hmm. um, I heard a lot less traffic on the radio when it comes to um, disturbances, if you would, on a parade route. Um, there were some things, a lot of, lot of pre-logistics, a lot of planning that we, um, we set up prior to all of the parades that um, things had to take place in order to, to have a smooth and safe Mardi Gras for our community. Right. You hear the factual stuff. People on the street, if we're on the balcony at HTV, we may hear, all right, we had a disturbance at this general area. They confiscated 10 guns. The reality is, could be two guns. By the time it gets down the street, it's 10 or 12 or 15 or 20. How many guns were confiscated just in general during the whole Mardi Gras season? And are they all related to Mardi Gras or is it something else? Well, it was a mixture. Um, outer perimeters of the parade route. Um, we we done things a little bit different. We did things a little bit different this year. Um, of course, we had a lot of officers on the road, um, but we also had a lot of perimeter units outside of the parade um, in order for response or just having, you know, having extra um, presence. And, and and it was a lot of the outer and, and some of the inner, but um, where we were able to pull a lot of narcotics uh, coupled with um, with firearms. Mm -hmm on the on, um, parade, off or outside the parade. You know, and, and you mentioned perimeter. You know, when the parade's driving and you're right off the little side streets and you see all the law enforcement, that's one thing. But you put people on streets behind it moving with the parade. That's correct. That seemed, that probably worked out pretty well, didn't it? It, it does, and, um, and, and it was the whole idea, in case something does happen, um, our main, uh, some of our main perimeter is moving moving through town as the parade's moving through town as the parade people as the parade pass people start to disperse we kind of see we keep you know we assist people getting people out with traffic but we have a main perimeter kind of following the parade all through town in case something happens we have a a good response to um you know in case something right. does happen and and actually do a little more proactive work where we're able to do you know take some narcotics and, and a lot of the firearms, which was all related with the narcotics. Yeah, I imagine you never know what you're going to come up on there in Mardi well, Gras, especially when there's a crowd. And uh, we, I think we had um, probably, I'm, I'm going to say Mardi Gras Day is probably the most, probably the biggest crowd I've seen in a long time yeah. for a Mardi Gras Day parade. And the weather we was beautiful. It was a nice day. What do you learn? I mean, this isn't your first parade. And, and even before you were sheriff, you covered many parades but I'm sure as a sheriff when you get more in tune to how these things work and, and what happens and you in charge of the route for a lot of time what do you take from each parade well how can we improve it I mean I have a staff meeting this week um, while it's all fresh in everybody's mind and we're going to look into look at everything that we've done how can we can improve what we do mm -hmm. and but it's, it's always improving because the more we can improve it the better we can better serve our community and give them a safe parade and, and you know, give the community um, what they come out to do, enjoy a, a nice day. We were talking before, when the parade's moving, people don't get bored. No, um, it, it's crazy and I've been, you know, for, for the longest time, I used to set the floats in the parade route, law enforcement officers in the parade route and we, we'd feed the parade from the, um, from the, from the mall. Um, so you're in there, you're listening to the radio, but when the parade stops, let it stop for 10 or 15 minutes, then people have a tendency, I think, to get a little bored with nothing there to be entertained, so I guess mm -hmm. they start arguing and, and have a lot more disturbances throughout, and I think that was the key, keeping the parade moving, um, a lot less disturbances in the area. And as long as the parade's moving, you, have, you, have, you don't have a lot of uh, disturbances, which has, officers have to go tend, mm -hmm. tend to. Let me ask you this, because you'd be a good one to ask. Uh, a morning parade, or let's say a noon parade or a 1 p.m. parade as compared to a 6 p.m. start parade which goes into nighttime deep into nighttime any factual difference on the amount of trouble you have from a daytime parade to a nighttime parade um i haven't noticed a whole lot of difference i think at night um i think we have a lot low concern because after the parade pass they may be sitting at bars and 
and they're still having a good time even right. after the parade. And they've had so, all day to drink. And they had all day to drink, and there's a big concern there. But we have officers out there, mm -hmm. to, so we can, you know, we can manage that. But uh, during the day parade, I mean, you'll have you you'll have a little bit of drinking. I think people are having a good time, but I think for the most part, people might barbecue and have a good old time out there. Mm -hmm. And then when the parade's pass and it's over, they pack it up and they're going home well at night sometimes they have a tendency to want to go other places yeah sometimes they pack up and come downtown and That's do different correct. things and they'll yeah. come downtown to go catch the parade or maybe go visit yeah. the bar and have a good time with the crowd there and finally before we've got about a minute left then we'll talk business on other things but your officers and i know y'all work well with city pd and everything they need a good break after Mardi Gras. Yes, it was. Um, it, you know, it definitely takes its it takes its toll because these guys are really day on and stay on. They don't really understand logistics. They're working their regular shifts, plus they're coming out for the parades, and we're trying to, you know, manage all of that and mm -hmm. and and keep them as fresh as possible so we can uh, provide a safe environment for our. Probably for our while community. a lot of retired police officers stay home and barbecue and ball <laughs> crawfish. They you don't see too many out there on the parade. A couple, you will, but not too many. Since Hurricane Ida, who and I hope we don't see another one like it. How, how's things going? Do you find things are starting to at well, least move a little bit? Well, I, I think Paris, they've been work, Paris government's been working with the, um, the contractors, working, getting the jail back up and running. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know they've been working pretty hard in there getting it back up, but I think the plan is this week we should start making a move and start slowly but surely um, getting, getting those guys back. And that's going to help you because I guess when criminals know there's no jail, they're probably a little more active, aren't they? Well, we we definitely have to filter and screen on what we're who we arresting or issuing summons or getting warrants because of that. I mean, we we have very we had very limited space. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I'll say this: if if somebody drinking and driving, they're going to get arrested. Domestic mm -hmm. violence, they're going to get arrested. Mm -hmm. Any kind of um, violent offense, they will be arrested. But I mean, other other offenses where normally where we you know didn't have a lot of space, so we had to we had to adjust accordingly because of the lack of space. And a community has to really have a jail, and it it must be jumping over hurdles when you don't have one. Well, it was definitely a concern, you know, like day two, day one, you know, I, it kind of gets blurry during the hurricane. <laughs> But uh, when we when we got in there, I think it was like the second day. Really looking at the jail, it was like really concerned. It was like, okay, this has got some damage, and it's going to take a while to get this thing up and running. Mm -hmm. And that needs to get on the forefront somewhere so we can start making this happen. If not, it's going to be problematic down the road. And uh, so we but, were able to work with the parish and get it get it going as quick as possible, if you will. But it also got you thinking and. It got the, the wheels spinning in, inside your head, and you started thinking out the box. Where did that lead you initially? Well, um, initial, when we, when we lost our jail, when we lost our jail initially, you know, we had to shift gears with uh, looting and crimes that, that, that are going to occur. I call it opportunists, mm -hmm. especially in those times, taking advantage of people because of, um, of the condition. And I said, well, we have to. So we ended up uh, working through uh, the FEMA requests, and we had some, uh, basically some some temporary jails, if you would. There were connex boxes that were insulated, and uh, mm -hmm. we were actually using that as temporary holding. And even with the courthouse that was uh, damaged, and uh, the judges were going out there and holding their little um, their courts, you know, to set their bond and 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 mm -hmm. ship them. Yeah. But it was pretty much get them. Mm -hmm. Judges do what they had to do. And we shipped them. You know, and you were thinking out the box as far as living quarters for your employees, which was right across. And I, I don't know the last count. Am I right? Forty-three or somewhere. Well, we had there? thirty-two initially, but over at the end it became like forty-three. Yeah. Um, some of them, um, some of our guys, through the process of cleaning, realized they had mold. Some of them were getting sick, and then mm -hmm. a lot of our officers moved in. Were able to get into their get their homes fixed mm -hmm. relatively fast. It allowed them. To concentrate on that instead of worrying about where I'm going to live and they were able to get in their homes relatively fast but meanwhile we had other we had other officers um we had mold in our house and th what are we going to do mm -hmm. and some of them were getting sick in their homes and they realized there was mold and we we're able to get them out and temporarily stay there so they could get their homes 
fixed. I was passing through the other day and, and, and saw it, remembered the story we did with you, and you mentioned kids out there playing. They had a bunch of kids out there playing, they and I'm going, they're used to the surroundings now. So it's worked out pretty well, hasn't it? It, it has. It has worked out well. And look, I'll tell anybody I'll do it again. If our office got in that situation because of a storm, because uh, we didn't lose anybody because of uh, – because of the storm, I didn't have a place to live. We we didn't lose anyone. They stayed and they continued to work. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I felt the right thing to do was um, make sure they had a place to stay so they can continue to work. Because this is the guys that are, and these are the guys that are, you know, taking care of our community. I know you knew the people were resilient. Of course, you walked this parish when you were campaigning. But I think we all were a little bit shocked of how resilient the parish can be after. I still call it a Cat 5. might have been closer to a Cat 6, and there's no such thing. But re resilience would be the word. Well, I will say this. Second day, well, it, really the first day, riding around the parish and looking, and, and I'm going down the bayous, and I, I, watched, I watched a gentleman on his roof putting a temporary roof up with, with 10, I guess, he had. And uh, by, the end of, by the end of a couple of days, he had another roof on his house. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't wait for nothing. And, you know, even people that come in here and work, and they said, compared to other parishes that's got hit with Hurricane Laura last year, he said, you wouldn't believe they still got a lot of blue tarps over there, but not so many here. Right. Because people are getting out and getting it done. And I think that's what we see. And I, and I commend you, and I commend the parish president, and I commend the leaders, because you're right. If you, if you drive to Lake Charles, and nothing against their people, but no. there are a ton of blue tarps. And that storm was before ours. We still have a lot of damage, there's no doubt, but people are moving. I think we'll always have scars from the storm, mm -hmm. but people adjust, they bounce back, and, and they survive. And the landscape has changed. It, it does. It has. And, you mm -hmm. know, the funny thing, my wife says, where are those lights coming from? We were going to my, my son's house the other day. And she said, where are those lights coming from? I said, that's from the airport. I've never seen those before because where, <laughs> where, my, where my son lives, he had a lot of trees in the back, and a lot of those trees are not there. So you can see those lights a lot more clear You get from a the different airport. perspective. Let's talk about the future expansion of Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Department. What can you tell us? Well, um, during the storm, as you know, during Hurricane Ida, our motor pole was damaged. Um, we, we About $1.3 million of damage in our motor pole. Um, outsourcing mechanical work and the work and logistics that comes out of the building, it became uh, it became apparent as like either we're going to lease a building, find something else temporarily, and start to look. So that was the original intention. And then we started looking at um, we looked at a building and when we saw it, I'm like, you know, the the, the damage downtown. Um, like even a radio room was damaged in downtown and looking at all the damage and what we would have to rebuild and construct and when I looked at this we went look at the building and I'm like you know what I could move my whole sheriff's office here and we got room for expansion we got room to grow mm -hmm. and solve a lot of our issues even downtown with parking I mean there was we we leased three external buildings outside the courthouse mm -hmm. just to function and I don't need to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Even a parking lot where we lease 26 parking spaces. And, and at the end of the day, I, you know, I always call a recipe for, a recipe for, for, for frustration was, mm -hmm. okay, it's tax, it's, you know, it's end of the year or beginning of the year is tax time and people going up there to pay their taxes and you got court and you have a lot of activity and people are driving around just to find a parking space that became very problematic and there was always a lot of issues that we dealt with downtown and now that we we've, we've got the new we've got a new building we got plenty of room for expansion and growth and you know eventually with the plans what i'm building for my detectives mm -hmm. um for our evidence and patrol and everything we're kind of bringing it underneath um one building and in including my multiple my multiples up and running we haven't missed a beat where where the damage was received but we shifted all of our equipment and our, our mechanical equipment mm -hmm. where we haven't lost a beat on that so we don't have to outsource. But I, mean, I guess it's tough for you as a sheriff, too. If you've got people in all different directions, you've got to physically travel there to get to all of them. And, and it's been my, you know, it's been the funny, uh, you know, when, when, when we have appointments and everything and I'm, I'm in an office 
and we, we're clear from appointments. I said, mm -hmm. well, I'm going tour. I'm going tour. I'm going to visit all my people. Mm -hmm. my, my assistant knows what that means. Like, I'm going to right. motor pool. I'm going here. I'm going to visit all our people throughout the um, parish w when I get there. But now, it's, you know, I, I can walk out in my office and go walk down and see a lot of our people. Mm -hmm. And uh, and to me, that's being being available to them is important. But I was thinking it's in its own way, too. It probably helps morale because everybody's together, and they feel like they know each other more. And, and, and that's right. I mean, you have you have functions or, or luncheon with your personnel, and people are like, well, who's that? Well, they work in the records. Well, I never mm -hmm. even knew, I don't even know who those people didn't know. Right. Now we're, you know, and that's another thing with the with the new additions. A lot of these office spaces outside the courthouse mm -hmm. will be consolidated. What will the old courthouse be used for? That well, we're much still we're, we still use bonds and fines. Okay. The old courthouse we're still going to have bonds and fines. Anything related to the courts mm -hmm. and the security and all of that is still going to be there. Right. But it, it gives room maybe for the judges to expand a little bit. Well, too? that may be the case. I know it's going to definitely help the district attorney because yeah. he received a lot of damage and so some of our office spaces are being occupied and uh, are being occupied by um, the district attorney because. And we always thought of the courthouse and the annex as sort of being indestructible, but we realized there in Ida, everything could be destroyed. There was a lot of uh, a lot of equipment, I guess, whatever on the roof of the um, of the annex was damaged, mm -hmm. and 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 it caused a lot of water to come into the building. And but then, I think it was designed to be a bunker where you go down underneath the basement, and but Hurricane Ida. Made it, everybody it, it rethink found, a little bit. It found, it found yeah. some 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 weak points in the building, yeah. and uh, but you know we're we're gonna bounce back. You know that's what we do. We didn't really yeah. miss a beat from services from our community. Look, there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, logistical shuffling and mm -hmm. to make it happen. But at the end of the day, we didn't we didn't miss any services, and we, we used our old motor pool as long as we possibly could. In the process, right now it's getting uh, it's getting a structural getting ready for the structural um, repairs on the old motor pool and uh, and we got future plans for that but I know how you think now I know know you well enough to know that you're sitting there with a plan and you're going okay this new facility is going to cost me this amount but I can get rid of this amount but I'm making it sound simple but it's a lot of properties it's, it's, it's a, a lot of rentals it's, it's, it's a, lot, a of lot of it's a lot of things now that with the new building is ours yeah. and we got plenty of room to grow mm -hmm. um, I don't have to lease three or four spaces or slots and have our people spread out. I can, I have one roof and I can put the major, the bulk of our operation mm -hmm. under one roof. Which, believe it or not, from the records to the criminal side to civil side, everything's interconnected. Everything's interconnected. Mm -hmm. And now I think the, the efficiency of our office is going to be far better. Um, at the same time, the services to our community. Is going to be a lot more efficient, which to me, when we create efficiency, we we have the ability to serve our community better. Yeah, and no I think doubt. it's important that we we look at the streamlining and and efficiency to better serve our our people. And I have a few seconds left. I want to thank you and the whole department and city police and all law enforcement. Great job there in Mardi Gras. We do live in a very safe community. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. All right, there you have it. The sheriff from Terrebonne Parish, Tim Saunier. And uh, we appreciate him coming by and chatting with us here on HTV. We'll take a short break. We'll have a lot more. Don't go away.